Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, I would like to continue discussing rotational movement um, and I, I will try to build some parallels between um, translational movement, the movement um, basically along the straight line forward with certain speed and we will usually con uh, consider the, the constant acceleration and the corresponding movements um, around certain axes, the rotational movement. So, translational and rotational. Moving along the straight line and moving uh, around the axis. Okay, so, what's common and what's different? Well, first of all, let's think about how we um, identify the position when we are moving along the straight line. Well, usually we have certain point which is the beginning of our motion. This is something which we can have a zero point. Um, and in most of the cases we are measuring the distance from time equal to zero to certain time and the distance is function of the time. So, from s of 0 to s of t, this is the distance covered during the time interval from 0 to time t. Now, what's the equivalent of this position relative to the beginning of the motion, or the distance relatively to the point where the motion started? What's the equivalent in rotational movement? Well, obviously, if we are talking about rotation, we probably should do exactly the same thing. At t is equal to zero, we measure the point uh, where exactly the motion started. And then, as our rotation goes on, at the time t, we will have certain angle. So, the angle of rotation is in some way an equivalent of the distance um, during the translational uh, movement. So, this angle of rotation phi of t is basically uh, the equivalent of the position. So, in this case position is distance, let's say meters or something else. In this case it's an angle in radians, for instance, okay? So, right now we are talking that translational and rotational uh, motions, something which is position or a distance from certain beginning point is uh, parallel to angle of rotation in, uh, in case of rotational movement. Okay, next. Next concept which kinematics usually considers when we are talking about translational movement is the speed. Now what is the speed? It's also a function of time and by definition this is the first derivative of the distance from the beginning by time. Well, obviously when we introduced it we have something like infinitesimal uh, time period from, from t to t plus differential of t and our um, distance increased from s of t to um, s of t plus differential of data, uh, uh, differential d of s of t and obviously the average which is basically this during this period of time whenever my infinitesimal time period dt is shrinking to zero that would give us the first derivative. Okay, now let's do the same in case uh, 
of the rotation. So what I will do is I will have the first derivative of my rotational angle uh, of time and I call it rotational or angular as they say angular speed okay so we have angular rotation and its first derivative is angular speed now obviously if this function is given we can very easily calculate its first derivative now here is a very important aspect of rotation you see, in translational uh, movement, um, the speed is always associated with the vector uh, character of the movement. That's why we're talking not about speed, but in most cases we have to really talk about velocity. Velocity is a vector which um, accumulates in, 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 in itself two components of the speed, the magnitude and direction. Now, the vector character of uh, angular speed is not so obvious. Um, however, if we will look deeper into this particular uh, problem of rotation, um, we will find that it's not just the uh, first derivative of the uh, angular uh, position uh, which we are interested in. In theory, if we want our angular um, speed to represent the rotation in as much as velocity represents the translational movement as a vector, we have to specify a little bit more than just the rate of change of this um, angle um, uh, as, as the time goes on. We have to specify the axis around which rotation actually occurs well in the same way as the vector um, of velocity specifies the basically the line along which the movement is is occurring now in, in in this particular case in case of rotation what's very important is where exactly is the axis of rotation of rotation and also another very important characteristic is direction because it can be this way or this way around this same axis now for this reason we represent this first derivative not just as a scalar um, without basically any kind of direction we will represent it as a vector and here is how we will do it so let me wipe out this, which is actually the view from the top on our rotation. And I will specify the rotation in three-dimensional way. This is, this is the axis of rotation. This is a plane of rotation. This is a center of rotation. Now, this is our angle phi of t and now what I will do is I will put this vector from this point along the axis as a vector now it has the magnitude equal to well the first derivative obviously and also what's very important I can um, position this vector on this particular uh, picture up or down right so what I'm going to do is if my rotation is this way then I'll position it upward if rotation was in an opposite direction I will position my omega of t my angular velocity downwards so what's the rule well, here is the rule. If you look from the top of this vector, or the end of this vector, to the plane, if rotation seems to be occurring counterclockwise, which is positive direction, okay, 
that that means uh, so they, that means that we are uh, lo looking correctly. Now, if rotation is in this way, I have to put it down, and if you look from the bottom onto ro rotation in this direction, we will also have it opposite uh, the, uh, to, the, to the clock. So it's always from the view uh, from the view from the top. Um, the uh, rotation occurs always in the positive direction. So that that's basically the rule, right? So from the top of the vector of angular velocity, looking onto the plane of rotation, rotation seems to be counterclockwise in, in the positive direction. So, now we can say that this particular vector completely determines our rotation, because it has the direction which corresponds to the axis. Um, it also has direction along the axis which specifies the direction of the rotation and the magnitude specifies the uh, angular speed. Now, there is another rule which basically can be applied um, to find out what is the direction of my um, omega uh, up or down on this picture. It's called the rule of the right hand. So, if you will position your right hand, put it on the plane where, uh, where, where the rotation occurs in such a way that your um, fingers are going around the axis and they basically direct where exactly the rotation, which direction rotation goes, then the thumb will go to uh, direction of the omega. Now, if um, just on this picture, if direction is not from here, but from, but for, but in a different direction, this direction, then this would be an invalid uh, position of the right hand, right? Because my fingers would point this direction, but it really go, go, goes another way. So I have to, from underneath, I have to position my hand like this, my right hand. Then my fingers and the corresponding movement would coincide, and my omega will point downwards in this case. So that's basically called the rule of the right hand. It's equivalent to whatever I was just saying, that from the top of the omega, um, rotation should always be uh, viewed as positive direction, counterclockwise. Okay, that's all about angular uh, velocity. So this is the vector. Now, um, what is the relationship between angular velocity, or I can say angular speed, if I just forget for a second about um, uh, the vector characteristic of, of, uh, of omega. So what's the relationship between uh, angular uh, speed and the speed along a trajectory? Um, well, along a trajectory we can always calculate speed basically using this particular rule, right? So if my angle is uh, changing as a uh, phi of t, then during the infinitesimal period dt uh, from from t to t plus to to t plus dt during this infinitesimal time interval my angle will change from phi of t to phi of t plus dt which is basically d well i should put from this, it should be a difference from phi of this my ending minus beginning. And this is d f of t. This is my change of the angle. So, so if this is my d phi of t. So if this is an angle, now, what's the length of this arc? Well, obviously, the length of the arc is radius uh, times the angle. So, 
the length of this arc, which is the differential of s of t, s of t, where s is basically the um, the distance from the beginning along along the circle, it would be equal to radius times my angle. So this is basically the relationship between distance covered from the beginning and uh, uh, and, and, and the angle by which we have moved. Now, obviously, if I will divide it by dt, I will have linear speed along the trajectory, which is v. at point T and it's equal to radius times omega of T because this is the first derivative of the angle which is this so this is the relationship between linear speed along the uh, trajectory the circular trajectory and the angular speed uh, of the rotation. Okay, and the last one is what we usually consider in mechanics and kinematics is acceleration. So what is acceleration if we are talking about translational movement? Well, that's the first derivative of the speed by time or second derivative of the position or distance by time, right? So, we have a of t, this is equal to v uh, derivative of t, or if you wish, s second derivative of t. Well, we can do exactly the same with acceleration um, of the rotational movement, and in this case we're talking about angular acceleration. So, angular acceleration, usually it's alpha, alpha of t, it's the first derivative of my angular speed. Or, if you wish, second derivative of uh, angle of rotation. This is alpha. Maybe it's not clear this is alpha. This is alpha. From, we, from which we can derive exactly the same kind of relationship between linear acceleration and angular acceleration. Now, uh, in most of the problems related to translational movements, we are talking about, if we are talking about acceleration, we usually talk about acceleration which is a constant. Like, for instance, we are moving with the same acceleration, constant acceleration, under, for instance, uh, uh, actions of some permanent constant force or something like that. Now, we, we also can consider a movement around a circle, the rotation, with constant um, angular acceleration, which means my uh, angular speed is increasing, increasing, increasing. When does it occur? For instance, you turn on the engine from um, from the state of rest, it starts uh, picking up the rotations up until certain uh, uh, rotations per minute, let's say, the maximum. So that's how your engine actually works, right? Or your electric motor or something like this, or your engine in the car. So it happens during certain interval of time, and the speed of rotation changes from zero, basically, because it was rest, to certain maximum uh, for which this particular engine uh, is supposed to be. So, this period, during this period, the speed is constantly increasing, which means my omega is constantly increasing, and we probably, are, with, with a certain degree of certainty, say that, okay, 
it's increasing with a constant rate, which means acceleration, in this case angular acceleration, is uh, constant. Now, in this particular case, what we can do, we can do exactly the same which we had for translational movement. Let me just remind you. If you have rotation, if you have movement along a straight line with a constant acceleration, then um, you can say that, uh, first of all, you can say that the speed at moment t is equal to speed at moment 0 plus acceleration constant times t. Remember this formula? Well, where does it come from? Well, first of all, it, it, it comes from the definition. This is a definition, and this is a constant, right? So integrating, if the first derivative is equal to constant, then the function itself is equal to this constant times t plus certain constant. What is this constant? Well, if t is equal to 0, this constant is equal to v of 0. So my the speed at time t is equal to speed at time 0 plus constant acceleration multiplied by time. So that's how this is obviously derived. Now, whenever you're talking about position, s of t, now this is again beginning position plus um, speed at the moment 0 plus a t squared divided by 2. Remember this formula? Again, how can I um, derive this formula? Well, very simply, since my acceleration is second derivative of um, of the position, of the distance, then we integrate it twice. Now, integrating it twice, I will have that that my s of t is some kind of a polynomial. One constant t plus another constant, right? So what are these constants? Well, obviously, if t is equal to 0, now this is 0, this is 0, so this one would be equal to s of 0, right? So this is my constant. OK, fine, we got that. And then. The next one is, um, how, how, how can I find out what, what's, the, what's the value of C1? Well, we can just take any other um, moment of time. Let's say, I don't know, time is equal to 1, let's say, and you will get, you will get this, another constant. Uh, the V, this one would be equal to this one, right? Now, um, as far as the coefficient here, we need the second derivative to be a, so I have to put it over 2, because the second derivative would be uh, 2, uh, the first derivative would be a t squared, first derivative would be um, a t, right? And the second derivative uh, would be a, right? So that's why we have this. And the first derivative is supposed to be a speed, right? So if we will take the first derivative of this, this will go out. This will be uh, a t, right? So the first derivative of this would be v of t is equal to a t plus c1, right? And this we have already covered. If you put t is equal to 0, you will get c1 is equal to v of 0. So, this formula is very simple, both actually, this and this, and they are derived by integrating um, the concept of acceleration, which is the second derivative of the uh, distance, or the first derivative of the speed. Now, we will do exactly the same in angular case, in case of rotation. So, what do we know? 
we know that by definition my first derivative is my angular speed and my second derivative or first derivative of the speed is my acceleration which is constant so a, a alpha is constant right we'll do exactly the same as before we just change the letters it was a instead of alpha it was v instead of omega and it was s instead of phi because everything else all the logic which I did by integrating and and checking what's the state at t is equal to zero gives uh, the constant so we'll, what we will have is this formula alpha t squared divided by 2 plus uh, not v now it's omega omega of 0 times t plus initial angle so this is how my angle of rotation changes with the time if my acceleration um, angular acceleration is constant and obviously from this we have this and that's how my angular speed is changing so again absolutely the same type of um, derivation of this as before if you take the second derivative of this you will have alpha right because this will be zero after the first uh, differentiation and this will be zero after the second differentiation and you will have only alpha which means that the second derivative is is alpha which is constant now if you take um, only the first derivative then you will have basically this formula because this will disappear this would be a constant this one and this after the after the differentiation from this you will get this so everything fits so what my point was to to parallel um, translational movement and rotation around uh, the axis so we have introduced the angular speed and angular acceleration and uh, by the way when we will go to the dynamics we will learn regular dynamics and, and forces and masses and uh, and uh, uh, Newton's laws and then we will try to parallel um, the theory to rotational movement and we will introduce rotational dynamics as well based on rotational um, acceleration angular acceleration and, and speed and and whatever the equivalent of the force will be in case of um, rotational uh, movement the equivalent of the force and the equivalent of the mass etc so the dynamics of the translational movement is really can be um, uh, somehow put into a, uh, into a uh, correspondence to dynamics of um, rotational movement but so far we were just learning pure kinematics so it's a pure uh, movement without any kind of a forces or, or masses or inertia etc etc okay um, now I suggest you to um, maybe uh, read the, con uh, the the notes for this particular lecture on physics for teens um, this is the course available at unisor.com uh, everything is uh, free for all on this website and there are no advertisements so just use it at will uh, that's it thanks very much and good luck